Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining my session today and thanks so much to Clinica Summit for having me along. Uh, it's been a great event and I yeah, really look forward to seeing the rest of the speakers. My session today is going to be on patient-led healthcare, uh, how we can improve accessibility, outcomes and experiences through technology. I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself first. Uh, my name is Nick Blair. I'm the founder and CEO of Midnight Health. And we're a digital health company that is democratizing healthcare through a patient-led digital platform that consolidates the fragmented industry, simplifies experiences, improves accessibility, and enhances patient outcomes. We founded Midnight Health in October 2020 when we commenced the development of our platform and launched our first brand, uh, Yuli, which is a women's healthcare brand in February 2021. Uh, following that, we launched Stagger in August, which is a men's healthcare brand. And we raised a $4 million capital round from NIB, the health insurer, in November 2021. Uh, since raising capital, we've been focused on uh, growing our team, uh, building out the capabilities of our platform, uh, and really working towards our longer term vision to build a, a consolidated um, ecosystem for uh, patient led healthcare. So, I wanted to start by talking about what is patient led healthcare. And so, the first thing that we need to take into consideration is patient led versus practitioner led. And so as, you, as, as many of you would probably understand, uh, you know, we currently exist in an environment where healthcare is predominantly practitioner led. And so the transition to patient led means that we're starting to see patients take control of their own health. And it's something that we need to facilitate through digital technology and through uh, clinicians and the way that we approach healthcare. We want to empower patients with the tools and information that they need. And we also you know, will predominantly find that technology can be a way to uh, help patients to access, manage, and receive care. And one thing I wanted to highlight is that patient-led healthcare is certainly much more than just telehealth. As we've been through the pandemic, I think it's very uh, easy to confuse patient-led healthcare with being a telehealth first environment. But patient-led healthcare is certainly much more. And we look at you know, things like digital therapeutics, uh, typically delivered through uh, mobile applications or websites, uh, medication and pharmacy delivery, Look at things like chronic disease management programs, which can now be moved from an offline uh, environment into a digital one. Uh, at home testing, uh, which is a, a flourishing industry as we move into uh, looking at different types of um, diagnostics, uh, connected devices, and not just connected medical devices such as scales and blood pressure monitors, but also the devices that we wear every day, our smart watches, our smartphones, things like that. We also look at education, um, you know, patient-led access to education about different chronic diseases, behavioral change, uh, which can be delivered via different mechanisms. And we're also looking at coaching, you know, which can be delivered one-to-one -one or in groups or via digital means as well. Uh, and finally, you know, things like appointment management, uh, you know, using platforms to be able to book, schedule, uh, and manage appointments with uh, healthcare professionals. And so why patient-led healthcare matters? Uh, you know, the pandemic has created a, a very different environment and in which healthcare existed a few years ago. And with that has become a change in demands and uh, desires for consumer in how they access and manage their own health. Deloitte recently published a report called Australia's Health Reimagined, which I suggest uh, everybody should have a read if they have not yet. And what, we've, what they found in that report is that 70% of patients were ready to use virtual health. 83% want to be in control of their health data and if appropriate, edit their own care plans. 13% discovered issues um, due to lack of communication between professionals. And 56% were willing to use mobile apps, wearables and devices to manage their own health. And so the question that we must ask is why has it taken so long? Patient-led healthcare has been a topic of discussion for many years, uh, as yet it still has struggled to make progress uh, towards um, advancing into a patient-led environment. And the first thing uh, you know, that has held this up is the lack of consumer demand. And so people who have typically been accessing healthcare over the last 10 to 15 years have, haven't necessarily been technologically first um, or technologically savvy users. Uh, they're people who are used to a traditional environment of delivering healthcare. Whereas now we're starting to see that shift change as um, digital first um, generations are now starting to become the users of health and people who are desiring healthcare. Uh, there's a reluctance of healthcare practitioners. I think you know, anybody who's close to the healthcare industry understands that there is a reluctance of practitioners to shift into a digital first or a patient led environment. And we're starting to see that change as strains on the healthcare ecosystem uh, continue to get worse. And the pandemic has certainly shown uh, practitioners that 
we can deliver healthcare uh, effectively through different means. And I think we're starting to see that mentality shift as we move into a patient-led environment. Funding models are also something to take into consideration, which I'll discuss more shortly. But the Australian funding model uh, certainly doesn't lend itself to uh, a focus on a patient-led environment or focusing on patient outcomes. And so that's something where you see uh, care uh, models in, in other countries have a, an advantage over, what, over the Australian um, healthcare system. Legacy technology. So something else that we, uh, you know, that has limited the growth in patient-led healthcare initiatives is the fact that many people are working on uh, software and techn technology platforms that, until now, have simply made it difficult to um, interconnect or interact with other systems. And so, we're actually finding that, uh, you know, now as as these uh, platforms are progressing, moving into cloud environments, making APIs more accessible, uh, that you know, it is now becoming easier to develop a patient-led solution. And finally, the ownership and sharing of patient data. Uh, so that's that's typically uh, you know being quite a problem uh, in terms of uh, interoperability and being able to share patient data and understanding who owns that and who uh, how can we access that uh, in a in a manner that's not so difficult so that we can actually use that information to provide patients with data and provide uh, their support network or their care network with data that will help them to deliver better outcomes. And as I mentioned, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has put a rocket up it. And so patient-led healthcare has, in a matter of two years, uh, I guess, condensed a, a rapid adoption um, and demand and, and also opened the eyes of practitioners into how using technology can improve healthcare outcomes, can actually provide more scalability and, and allow people to access and manage their health. And so while we you know, may have had a 10 year journey to get to this current point, uh, you know, it's happened in a two year period. And I think that's highly beneficial for the patient led environment for patients and clinicians uh, in the long term. And so as I mentioned, one of the challenges has been the funding models around healthcare. And so while Australia has a great healthcare system, it also means that our funding model limits innovation in patient led health. Um, with a primary model that focuses on activity based funding or fee for service, we arguably limit innovation and a focus on patient outcomes when compared to other countries who might adopt a value-based approach. A PwC funding for value report uh, had a little quote in it that I took out, which said, it could also be argued that Australia has a system where providers rather than patients control what, when, and how services are delivered. And I think that sums up quite well the current environment or, or the traditional environment in which healthcare is delivered in, the, in Australia. And so this is something that over time, you know, we hope can see a shift, which means that we can uh, equip, equip and innovate uh, with solutions that actually provide better healthcare outcomes and allow patients to take more control. And so there's many, many benefits of patient-led healthcare, um, but there are four that I'm going to talk about today. And the first is around patient experience. The second is around improving accessibility. The third is for enhancing patient outcomes. And finally, delivering healthcare at scale. I'll start with patient experience. It's, it's undeniable that the patient experience in healthcare is a poor one. And while many other industries have adopted uh, new methods of doing things, uh, delivered new technologies and innovated their, their customer experience, um, healthcare has lagged behind. And so a great patient experience should take into account a number of things. Firstly, it should be familiar. Um, it should simplify the process and reduce friction in a transaction, uh, not only for a single um, engagement, but for ongoing care. It should offer convenience. It should consolidate the fragmented industry. It should provide better ongoing care and outcomes for a patient. And it should also deliver information in the right format at the right time. Patient experiences should be familiar. One of the challenges or the, the problems that I see in healthcare is that Many people developing solutions for healthcare are very inward facing and they look at how things are currently done and how they replicate that or develop a patient or customer experience uh, that mimics the existing environment. We need to look outward. You know, companies such as Google, Uber, Spotify, Fitbit, Netflix and Apple have spent countless hours and millions of dollars on taking a human centered design approach in the way that they deliver experiences. And not only taking complex interactions and turning them into a seamless or easier approach, but also making them enjoyable. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We need to build experiences that patients are familiar with, which will also improve adoption and make them easier um, and, and more accessible. 
we should also consolidate the fragmentation. I think it's it's very well understood that healthcare is a fragmented ecosystem, and that only creates a, a broken and um, and difficult patient experience. Um, and so we need to consolidate the fragmentation in the industry, and we need to provide a, a seamless patient experience that simplifies healthcare, uh, regardless of the complex number of interactions that need to occur. So you look at things like you know, visits to general practitioners, uh, allied health, uh, accessing pharmacy, pathology and radiology, uh, medical devices, both in, um, in complex medical solutions, as well as smart devices that we wear, um, digital therapeutics for behavioral change and, and diagnostic testing, and also ongoing health management and care plans. All of these things typically sit in isolation of one another. And it's our job as people focusing on patient-led healthcare and improving the experience to work out how we can deliver a connected ecosystem that consolidates the fragmentation and starts to change the way that um, patients interact with healthcare. We also need to deliver information in the right format at the right time. And I think we're all too familiar with the scenario of a patient who's um, either left to, to leave a clinic or a, or a hospital environment with uh, not much information at all, or alternatively, sometimes you're given a stack of information that you're not going to read, a, a whole bunch of printed out pamphlets that um, provide you with an ongoing care plan that sits at the bottom of your drawer. And so part of the challenge uh, for delivering and improving the patient experience to also deliver better health outcomes is that we need to deliver information in the right format at the right time. And this goes looks at things like the initial consult. You know, maybe that's taken by face-to-face -face via video. It could be text-based. It could be through a digital platform. But how do we then deliver information uh, off the back of that to ensure that uh, a patient adheres to a care management plan or ch makes the behavioral changes that we think they need to uh, so that they can get a better quality of life? And so that's how we, you know, we can use technology to scale the delivery of information and also take it into different formats outside of just a face-to-face -face or a paper-based environment. And so we can, for ongoing care, we can look at things like video, email, SMS, mobile applications, uh, or, or other custom built digital platforms uh, to deliver information in bite sized pieces in formats that are familiar and in ways that can actually uh, ensure behavioral change and ensure adherence to care management plans um, or just uh, and notifications when needed. And so, the, and then, you know, once we go through the ongoing care process, we can also move into prevention. And so as we build technology and we use data and we understand that the patient health record sits at the center of uh, delivering patient-led health, we can also start to look at prevention. And we can use email and mobile applications again, SMS, uh, phone calls, uh, mail, traditional mail, uh, or digital platforms to start analyzing patient data and moving into delivering preventative healthcare messages um, or understanding if someone's susceptible to a certain disease and using technology to prompt them to take a test that might help to diagnose a chronic condition earlier than they might have in another environment. And also more importantly, use a format that people are familiar with that will ensure they actually take action. And so that's how we can start to ensure that we're providing people with information that they need when they need and only that much information at the right time. And we'll start to see further adherence to care plans and uh, improved uh, patient experience. And next we wanna look at improving accessibility. Looking at uh, data from rural, around rural and remote, remote health uh, published by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, uh, people reported a decreasing information sharing between health providers as remoteness increased. There was a six times higher rate that re for people that reported not having a GP nearby compared to metro areas. 58% of people in remote and very remote areas do not have a specialist nearby. Um, that number still remains at 30% in outer regional areas. And so it's very important for us to use technology and also patient-led health to deliver care to people who live in these remote areas and improve accessibility significantly. I spoke earlier about how we currently exist in a predominantly practitioner-led environment. So what happens if people in regional areas don't have access to a practitioner? And so by allowing a patient-led or facilitating creating a patient-led environment using technology, we can enable people to get access to care that they're currently missing out on. And so this is a very important part, particularly in a country like Australia, where we have a disparate uh, land and, and a lot of people who uh, are not close to regional uh, to com metro areas and need access to um, to care that they currently don't get. So we can improve accessibility by using technology to provide access to healthcare. 
We need to combine hardware and software. We also need to remove barriers for regional areas when it comes to accessing care. And this will all result in us creating scalable solutions. And that's a very important part of the a patient led health care um, transition or moving into digital environments. A really great example of combining hardware and technology solutions is Swoop Aero uh, and a relationship that they're establishing with um, an initial test with Terry White came up. And so Swoop Aero had developed a drone technology which allows them to do the last mile delivery in regional areas for delivery of medication and other healthcare items. And so what this means is that by using software to combine with a hardware like Swoop Aero, we can now solve some of these challenges and problems that exist within the current environment and start improving the healthcare outcomes of individuals who use these solutions. And so when you look at uh, you know something like Swoop Aero, you know that's a a really far fetched example, I guess, of um, how they're doing something exceptional in terms of uh, delivering healthcare. But we can also look at more simple um, hardware that we can use. So you know if you start to take into consideration things like connected scales, connected blood pressure monitors, uh, these are the types of technology that we can actually equip our patients with in regional areas, and use our software to track. Uh, changes over time to use them to provide information to GPs who are connected in digital environment so that they can use that information to be able to diagnose more conditions, provide prescriptions for um, things that they currently can't in a digital only environment. And so I think the future of a connected environment of hardware and software is how we truly improve accessibility and provide better outcomes for those who currently miss out. Next, we want to look at enhancing patient outcomes. So we can enhance patient outcomes by empowering people to take control of their health. We can make it easier to access and receive health care. We can improve adherence to health management plans. We want to improve continuity of care. We can provide access to new health care services. And we can also leverage patient data for preventative health. And so I think when you create an environment where you're making it easier for people to access and receive healthcare, and you're also introducing them to access to new healthcare services that they, they can't receive uh, in their own environment currently, then we're also going to start seeing an improvement in patient outcomes. Are we going to see people live a healthier life, become, become diagnosed with conditions that they may have otherwise missed? Um, we're trying to improve adherence to health management plans by uh, using technology to ensure that, you know, firstly, somebody is uh, selecting to undergo this care when it's patient led and secondly to providing it in a way that's familiar with them in a way that helps to improve in, uh, their outcomes and their adherence to that program. And so there's there's many, many ways in which patient led healthcare can actually enhance patient outcomes and lead us all to live a healthier and happier life. One of the, the challenges, I guess, um, you know, particularly in regional areas, but also in metro areas is continuity of care. And while digital healthcare has been a great uh, addition, it's also in some cases contributing to the fragmentation just as much as we've already got with other healthcare services. And so we need to take a step beyond version one of digital health and move into a, uh, a centralized environment where a centralized piece of technology can ensure continuity of care and transfer of data between practitioners, devices, and other data input mechanisms to improve continuity of care uh, in an environment for a single patient. And this is how we're going to start to improve patient outcomes. And by using connected devices, general practitioners, sharing of data between allied health and specialists and things like digital therapeutics for behavioral change, connecting that entire ecosystem is how we imp actually improve continuity of care through digital health and create a patient-led environment where somebody receives the best outcomes ongoing for many years, um, as opposed to in just bursts of um, diagnosis or bursts of um, behavioral change. A great example of this is the CardiHab app. So CardiHab has created an uh, app-based cardiac rehabilitation uh, program. And so a clinical study, study conducted by CardiHab actually shows that increased participation and reduced readmission rates uh, through use of the CardiHab app. And so 42% of people against the control environment um, increased cardiac rehabilitation participation. And so what this means is that by taking a chronic care program and breaking that down into a uh, into a app based environment where people receive information as needed and have that ongoing coaching uh, increases their participation and better outcomes for the patient. 
Noom out of America is another great example. So they've got a mobile delivery of diabetes prevention program. And what they've discovered uh, through their clinical studies conducted with the CDC is that it improves weight loss uh, against a control group who haven't used a mobile delivery of the diabetes prevention program. And so 4.7% uh, 12 month weight loss um, was experienced through people who use the new map uh, versus a 0.33% gain for the control group. And so something like weight loss uh, as, as a um, solution for diabetes is something that uh, you know requires behavioral change and a short program or being told that you need to do that and, and handed the information uh, when you leave the surgery uh, or the clinic is something that uh, you know requires more work than just a sim single interaction. And so that's where programs like these uh, can enhance patient outcomes by um, being focused on developing that ongoing behavioral change. Finally, we wanna look at healthcare at scale. So we can deliver healthcare at scale by moving away from synchronous communication where possible. We can use technology for the interpretation and transfer of data and we also need to understand that there is a research resource shortage, which is only going to get worse. Synchronous communication or one-to-one -one interactions uh, is not a scalable solution. And so we need to look at how we can move away from synchronous communication as a healthcare industry and how we can find more scalable solutions through technology or through patient-led health uh, that allow us to actually deliver care to more people. And so using technology for not only the transfer of data, but also the interpretation of data allows us to start becoming more scalable and also means that GPs, specialists, allied health can spend more time uh, working with the patients that need it and allowing uh, those that can be delivered uh, through asynchronous communication um, more time and making uh, communication more efficient. So asynchronous communication is more scalable. So moving to asynchronous communication models improves scalability and allows the patient to access healthcare at a time that suits them. So it's important to understand that patients aren't always going to be available at the times that they need to access care. And if you look at a simple example, like receiving a repeat prescription, that's a great example of how we can and how we can and how we have in recent years moved from synchronous communication to asynchronous communication where a GP can get access to all the information that they need through text-based or um, video, video upload or image upload uh, solutions that a GP can review at a later time. And so that means that a patient can access uh, and, and request care or prescriptions or, or um, treatments for a condition in an asynchronous environment, which also not only means that the patient can access that at a time that suits them, but it also means that a practitioner can um, confidently and successfully uh, treat and manage uh, more customers and more patients. And so that's what we need, to, an environment that we need to shift into wherever possible. Now, of course, asynchronous communication is not always going to be a viable solution. You know, there's many chronic conditions, there's many solutions that require somebody to see a, a GP or a specialist face-to-face. -face. And so, of course, this is not a catch-all solution. However, it is one solution that will help us to scale healthcare and alleviate the stress that currently exists within the healthcare environment. Transferring data and information via technology is also something that's important and needs to transition as legacy systems evolve and move into cloud-based uh, environments. Much of healthcare in reality is the transfer of information or the transfer of data. Using technology, we can provide information at scale and also apply automation and machine learning to take some of the guesswork and the grunt work out of uh, understanding, interpreting and making decisions based on that data. And so not only can we improve continuity of care, we not only can we improve the and enhance the patient outcomes, but we can also use technology uh, to transfer data and reduce the burden uh, on uh, practice managers, on people who are working in these environments where currently, you know, there's still, still much data that's transferred between practices, between clinicians, uh, between patients and doctors, uh, and, and use that in a way that um, digital technology speeds that up. And so that's something that we need to ensure that we're starting to adopt and starting to think with a um, data and information transferred via technology first environment. And I'll leave you with one more thought. Finding more scalable solutions is a necessity. Here's data um, published by American um, Association of Medical Colleges, which projects the physician shortfall range just in America from 2017 to 2032. 
And as you can see, the situation and the problem is only getting worse, exacerbated by a global pandemic. So it's very important for us to think about patient-led healthcare, think about how we can improve accessibility, think about how that helps enhance patient outcomes, and then if anything, how that improves the scalability, because that's what we, that is necessary. And it's a problem that's uh, only gonna continue to get worse. And so particularly with digital healthcare, this is something that we can solve or something that we can find a solution for. And it's important that this is what we um, take into consideration. And this is how we view the importance of our role in digital health. And on that note, I'd like to say thanks for listening. I hope you've all enjoyed my presentation and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the Clinica Summit. Thanks for having me.